Est-ce que le Premier ministre va appuyer la motion du Nouveau Parti démocratique pour garder ouverts les bureaux de service à nos anciens combattants? Failing the personal vote of the Prime Minister, will he at least allow his members of Parliament a free vote as to whether or not we should keep open the service centres for our brave veterans? The Honourable Minister of Veterans Affairs. Mr. Speaker, Veterans Affairs Canada is constantly looking for ways to improve service delivery to our members, uh, the, the vets uh, who need those, those services, Mr. Speaker. All veterans requiring personal support will continue to be visited by their case managers at their home, and as well, we have some 650 service points for veterans and Service Canada officers throughout the land. Here, here. Does the Prime Minister realize that from Cornerbrook, one of the offices being closed, to St. John's, it's an eight-hour drive in good weather? That it's not true that there will be home visits for all of these veterans, and that it is grossly unacceptable to be shutting down services to our veterans when we've lost eight of them to suicide in the last two months? <laughs> Well, Mr. Speaker, we all are very deeply saddened by the suicides, but I think it's patently unfair to connect those unfortunate circumstances to the office closures. Mr. Speaker, we do intend to keep on working on these issues to ensure that veterans, whether they need immediate service and, and be visited by a caseworker, that that continues to be, as well as their opportunity to access a local very, very close by service center office where veterans' issues will be dealt with at that point. Here, here. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Very, very close by 16-hour return trip. Yeah. Veterans in Sydney, Nova Scotia are holding sit-ins to try to stop the Prime Minister's decision to shut down these offices. One veteran even said, quote, we're fighting a war here. Veterans saying that they're feeling that they're fighting a war with their own government. How did they let it come to this? The Honourable Minister of Veterans Affairs. Mr. Speaker, this is uh, fear-mongering at the height of uh, all this rhetoric. The reality is, Mr. Speaker, that in the past, Veterans in need of home care have been served there and they will continue to be at their own homes or elsewhere of their choice as far as having to travel for regular ordinary uh, services, Mr. Speaker, that service will be provided in some 650 locations. Some of them, Mr. Speaker, right in the very building where the office was that is now being closed. That's the minister who said don't point your finger at me. It's not a question of fear-mongering, Mr. Speaker. It's a question of listening to Canada's veterans. It's the veterans who are speaking. It's not fear-mongering. The Prime Minister has repeated time and again this week that, quote, very few veterans are using these services. If that's indeed the case, why won't the Prime Minister accept to at least meet with those very few veterans to hear their stories? Very good. The Honourable Minister of Veterans Affairs. Well, Mr. Speaker, at least I know who I am. I have been committed to having an open dialogue with the men and women who serve Canada in uniform, and we've made significant advancements in how Veterans Affairs vet how veterans are served. Order. Order. The Honourable Minister of Veterans Affairs has the floor. Order. 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 The Honourable Minister of Veterans Affairs. Mr. Speaker, veterans across Canada should know that I am deeply committed, as is our government, Absolutely. to meeting with them and listening to their issues, no matter where and when that occurs. And, Mr. Speaker, I've always reached out to veterans, and I will continue doing so. Bravo. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. And 
they felt all the love this week, Mr. Speaker. Pendant qu'ils sont en train de fermer les bureaux de service aux anciens combattants, on apprend que le ministère de la Défense lui-même est carrément sous tutelle. Peut-être, M. le Président, s'ils étaient capables moindrement de gérer l'argent du public, ils ne seraient pas rendus à enlever les services à nos anciens combattants. Mr. Speaker, I have to reiterate the fact that we remain committed to working not only with, with groups across the land, but we also are working very closely with the Department of National Defense to ensure that we have a coordinated approach in delivering the kinds of services that either our serving members or those who are veterans will receive. And that is, is very typical of what we have been doing and will be continuing to do. Mr. Speaker, in my community, people are outraged at this minister's disrespect for veterans and his assistance to close our local veterans' office. These closures are going to hurt veterans in Windsor and Essex County, plain and simple. The people who fought to defend Canada should not have to fight again for the services they earned when they came home. Will the minister apologize to veterans in Essex County and Windsor and keep our office open? What will it take for him to do the right thing? Mr. Well, Mr. Speaker, to the uh, citizens and veterans of uh, Essex County, they can find services at the available at the uh, Can uh, Canada lo service locations where Veterans Affairs Canada employees are present in Windsor, in Amherstburg, in Bell River, in Leamington, in Tilbury, in Wallaceburg, in Chatham, Sarnia, wow. Petrolia, wow. and of course. Better from zero distance to the local office right in Windsor. Here, here. The Honourable Member for London Fanshawe. Well, unlike the uh, member opposite, New Democrats are working for veterans. Here, here, here. These offices provide critical, specialized, frontline services for our veterans. They can't be replaced by a 1-800 number or a computer. The Conservative cuts mean that even more veterans will be relying on the London office, which will have fewer staff to serve them. Will the Minister do the right thing, the honourable thing, and stop the closure of these offices? The Honourable Minister of Veterans Affairs. Mr. Speaker, I don't know how many times uh, one has to repeat uh, the message. The services that are being provided to veterans are enhanced to the tune of some 600 plus service points across the province, across the, uh, the country. As for London, Ontario, there's local services that will be available through the uh, service centre office. And Mr. Speaker, not every veteran needs to go to these offices. If they're in need of services, they can't travel, we travel there. We don't Excellent. make them travel. We've been doing that over long and continue Les conservateurs ferment des bureaux de service pour les anciens combattants. Ils dépensent 4 millions par année pour les bureaux de ministres qui se trouvent un peu partout dans le pays. Au lieu d'investir directement dans le service direct à la population, les conservateurs investissent dans le service aux ministres conservateurs. Comment peuvent-ils justifier que le budget pour les bureaux satellites des ministres est doublé alors que partout ailleurs dans les ministères, ils font des compressions? Unlike the previous government, we believe that all Canadians should have reasonable access to government ministers' offices. And that's why in 2010 we expanded and, placed and launched offices in the Northwest Territories, in fact, three offices in the far north. Because, Mr. Speaker, unlike the opposition, we believe that all Canadians should have access to government services Absolutely. right across this great country. Well, uh, Timmins, James May. Well, clearly they believe that all their ministers should be able to have access to perks. Yeah, Last yeah. year, to help their traveling ministers, the Conservatives spent $264,000 on an office in St. John's, $821,000 in Yellowknife, $187,000 in Whitehorse, and a shocking $589,965 on an office in Fredericton. Now, they already have offices here. They have huge bureaucracies at their fingertips. Their sense of entitlement knows no bounds. So why are these ministers helping themselves while telling veterans and seniors that the cupboard is bare? Yeah. 
Minister of Public Works. Well, Mr. Speaker, the opposition has been clamoring for more services for Canadians, more Canadians, and that's what we're offering. But we're making sure, unlike the previous government, that that access is available to Canadians right across this country. That's why we invested in offices for ministers, regional offices in the far north and indeed in other parts of Canada yes, can. so that Absolutely. all Canadians yes. have access yes. to ministers' offices wherever they are. Yes.